When the Berlin Wall came down in 1989, um, it was a surprise. Nobody really saw it coming. Like, for example, the CIA. They had no clue. Really, they didn't know it was going to happen. Uh, in his book, Legacy of Ashes, A History of the CIA, uh, the reporter Tim Weiner shows that on the night the Berlin Wall came down, the chief of the CIA's Soviet division, so guy who might think might have a handle on this, he was holed up at headquarters watching TV news coverage of what was happening in Berlin to try to come up with what he was going to tell the White House. Because according to Tim Weiner's uh, History of the CIA, quote, in a crisis... TV news coverage provided what passed for real-time intelligence. Same thing basically happened with Iraq's invasion of Kuwait. Two days before that happened, the CIA had called it unlikely. Again, according to Tim Weiner's reporting in Legacy of Ashes, on the day of the actual invasion, on that day in August 1990, Robert Gates, who was then a top intelligence advisor to the first President Bush, Robert Gates was at a family picnic. Quoting from Legacy of Ashes, a friend of his wife's joined him. What are you doing here, she asked. What are you talking about, Gates replied. The invasion, she said. What invasion, Gates asked. What invasion, says the top intelligence advisor guy. Today, the Associated Press is reporting on the state of U.S. intelligence in, context of, in the context of what's happening in uh, Tunisia and, and in Egypt. An unnamed senior source telling the AP, President Barack Obama sent word to National Intelligence Director James Clapper that he was disappointed with the intelligence community over its failure to predict the outbreak of demonstrations would lead to the ouster of the Tunisian president. Same source said there was little warning before Egypt's riots as well. White House spokesman Robert Gibbs defended the intelligence and denied the president was disappointed in it today. But when you look at what happened, first in Tunisia and then in Egypt, and how Washington has responded, it does seem like everybody was a little surprised, doesn't it? The common wisdom from the Beltway is that the response from Washington has been flat-footed, whether or not you think it has been substantively right or wrong. It seems to have caught folks off guard. Apparently, nobody expected what's happening right now in Egypt to be happening right now in Egypt. We were also apparently caught off guard when protests in Tunisia seemingly suddenly brought about the end of President Ben Ali's 23-year reign. And we were caught off guard when it turned out Hosni Mubarak was in more trouble than we realized as the protests in his country grew and grew and grew and grew. Gathering intelligence, making the country not be surprised about stuff in other countries, that is theoretically the job of the CIA. The thing they are supposed to be able to do is get useful information about the world that allows us to, if not predict events, at least reasonably foresee them sometimes. But generally speaking, we as a country suck at that. And it's partly because instead of focusing on that whole getting information core mission, the CIA has instead turned into this operational mini military. So way too often, instead of intelligence, instead of useful information, instead of knowing, say, that the Berlin Wall might come down or that Iraq's probably going to invade Kuwait or that Ben Ali's presidency isn't going to last through the protests in Tunisia or that Hosni Mubarak is weaker than he seems, instead of having any useful information like that to keep Washington from being surprised... What we get is instead a shadowy, secret, small branch of the military that U.S. political leaders don't have to answer for when they get asked. It's not a good trade-off. We have warned of instability. We didn't know what the triggering mechanism would be for that. And that happened in the last, end of the last year. I do want to get a general sense of when you all told the president that we were faced with something that's, that was as serious as what we have seen in recent days? I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to satisfy your specific question. My duties involved a more general understanding of the debates that were going on and not the face-to-face briefing of the president over this past you, year. You were told yesterday I was going to ask this question, weren't you? Um, not in this detail, sir.